Hi, I'm Vivia. Welcome to Las Bellas Artes. Wonderful art show that we put on every year that highlights and focuses on the great work of the participants at three different uh, housing projects here in Carpinteria. And which ones are those? It's Dahlia Court, Casa de las Flores, and Chapel Court. And our participants range from 2 to 82. We have little kids and we have grandmas. And what's going on today? Today is a celebration, so we have music, we have food, we have all these wonderful people that are here to celebrate with us. And you, how many years have you done this? Bayes Artists have been going for 19 years, and I've yeah. been with them for 16. Okay. Yay! And Kathleen is the other 19. Person. Kathleen at Lord is a ringleader and the starter. She and her great husband, Al Clark and I have all been really instrumental in keeping the program going and it's a wonderful now, program. Now is this possibly a retirement party? Is it going to go on? Or there, you... We're talking about maybe we're too old for it but we'll see. We'll okay, see where it goes. If anybody wants to try stepping up, yeah. try stepping up. <laughs> Contact us if you feel like running a program. Yeah. Okay, well thank you. Sure. Can oh, I talk about some of the stuff? Yeah. yeah. What, what's yeah. your contact info? Oh. If you're interested, um, look us up online, and it's CARP, C-A-R-P, Bellas, B-E-L-L-A-S, Artes.com. And we are co-sponsored by the Linda Fairley Carpinteria Arts Center and People Self-Help Housing Project. Now show me some of what's up today. Now this is done by the, the, the people in your program? These are done by the participants. And this has been over um, a three-day period at all three different sites. And they've all received and been shown inspiration pieces. The theme of today's show is pre-conquest. So these are all the indigenous peoples of the Americas before yeah. Spain and the European came to um, change things. So, so the, the kids were kind of educated in it and they, educated about art? Absolutely. Right? They were looking at images and they were thinking about what they represented. So if you look around here, you'll see we've got representations from the Aztec culture, the Maya culture, the Olmecs, the Toltecs, and, um, and, and all the different, many, many different kinds of um, indigenous cultures from the South, Central and South Americas. Show me a couple. Take a look at this one. These are fantastic. So these are from glyphs, and you remember that glyphs are like um, writing, or they each one is an image, each one tells a story. And then these are all gods, or this one is a ma from the Maya. So who are those by? These are from people that live at the housing the, the complexes. How, how was the person these are the, teenagers. Uh, really? Teenagers? These are teens. These are oh, teens. That's an adult. Okay, I love that. And that's a little kid. Okay. <laughs> so, and you can see how well everything works together because they talk to each other. Because the palette works together. Yeah. Okay, well, I think you're going to miss it. Did you want to point out anything else? No, I think I I, that's good. <laughs> I totally. One of our volunteers from a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I just really have to say that the, um, this installation, and Larry is going to walk around, was designed by Kathleen Lord, and she did a fantastic job of tying together the palette and the images. My name is Kathleen Lord, and I'm at the Art Center in Carpinteria for the opening exhibition reception of the Bellas Artes 2022 show, Ancient Aura. This show, we attempted to spend time looking at ancient art, murals, ruins in Mexico and South America and um, to study those and understand a bit more about what those civilizations were like, the complexity, the size, um, the magnificence of them, as you can see through their art. What we do is we, we make notebooks, um, like one of our notebooks was about the Toltec civilization, and a lot of the canvases are tall, you know, 12 inches by 36. And so we said, and you see the, the photograph of these tall, tall things sitting out in front of the ruins. And um, 
So we said, can you want to make one of those tall guys on here? And they make them. So they made tall guys? They, well, they're... Their version. Their, their version. You know, they look at the picture and it's all carved in stone and everybody sees something different and everybody reacts to what they see and every, they're all different, even though they all are looking at the same sort of statues. Um, is this, in a way, an outreach to the low-income Hispanic community? Uh, yeah, we, nice we, we tend to call it the underserved community because it's um, the people who live at the people's self-help housing sites of Chapel Court, which is a government housing, and people self-help manages it, and then also Dahlia Court and Casa de las Flores, which are people's self-help housing projects and managed by them. And so these people, um, it's they have more opportunities now than they did 20 years ago when we started, but um, like they, they don't have the opportunities to take the camps or the this or the that often. And so we go to those different sites and we bring the art and we bring the materials and everything is free and that's what we do. And the goal is partly to let them know about the magnificence of their ancient cultures and their ancient relatives. I mean, like you, Larry, you could go back historically and, and go as far back as you can and you would find, I think I've sort of found out, the same primitive peoples that we all share way back when. And a lot more was going on between the civilizations than, than we've known. Like we studied the glyphs, if you saw some that look in there, some little things, and those are Mayan words, Mayan symbols, Mayan, Mayan language. And, um, <clears throat> and they're all in stone, and so it still exists, you know, and, I, and we're all doing these little things, and we go, these are emojis, you know. How long are these, are our little emojis going to last, you know? But it's, it's just sort of, looking back into history and taking time to do it. Um, I have a certain affection for the Hispanic community, kind of their warmth, whatever. How would you describe it, if you can, in any way? I think they have incredible, what, they have a love of their culture, they have a love of life, and it's very intricate. So lots of ritual, lots of things everybody does and still, you know, still do. Their culture hasn't been extinguished um, as much as, like for me, I'm Danish. I don't know much about Denmark except Evelskivas. But they have, they love their culture and they want it to stay alive. They want to pass it on to their children and they enjoy participating in it. Culture is a big deal, the arts and the culture. And is there any discomfort at not being Hispanic, but teaching Hispanics about Hispanic culture, or is it just realistic? I, I don't know. I think um, we, we go to art shows, like Livia and I would go to the art shows and we try to study. And everything everybody knows, nobody knows it all. Nobody knows it is absolute truth or not truth. And what we're really sort of doing is, you know, just introducing and hoping it sparks an interest for someone in the future, you know. Like one of our little girls who was a rascal when she was little, she's now a, a lawyer in Berkeley. Really? Yeah. And, and she's, and, and it's fun to watch the kids grow and... How many years have you done it? I think it's 20 years. Someone said it was 14, but I don't know. <laughs> Some big hunk of time. Uh, a while, yeah. A bit of time. So, and a lot of the kids have grown now and have families, so it's, it's just fun. People's self-help is pretty cool, too, huh? They're, they're pretty cool. Well, they, who, who, can you say their name on it? Oh, People's Self-Help Housing? Right. Well, today, like Florida, who is the manager at Casa de las Flores, she helped to organize all the food for the event, you know, 
and they they help by hanging up the posters and we do all the workshops at the sites outside on the tables and and that's how it works. Anything else you'd like to say? I'd like to say that it was really nice to have Livia Zirkel help me and be my friend and study art and do art and love the kids and love the families like I do. With me. So, uh, so what's there? There's some pickles, uh, cheese and uh, uh, we wrap it all the together. Yeah, and we have some chips and guacamole also, uh, some salsas, uh, yellow, fresh fruit, and yogurt. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you here today. Oh, thank you. This is so good. This, yeah, nice place, nice music. So, I was mentioning to you that we try to study and look back into history. This is one of the books that we use. And it's an old book from the Anthropology Museum of Mexico. And, you know, it's, um, <laughs> don't give them my phone number. There's the open, the entry to the museum. So, um, in the middle, okay, here you see, these are the colors of Mayan murals. And these are some, a replica of a Mayan ancient Mayan stuff. But right here we have uh, um, where is it? You're gonna you're gonna kill me because I can't find my page quick enough. Okay, good. Okay. So You, I'm looking. Okay, well this isn't what we're looking at here, but yeah. I was talking to you about the Toltec. Um, and these are huge. Look right. at the human. I mean, oh, it's like, crazy. how big is your history? How fantastic is it? You know, and, and like the glyphs, everybody knows about Egyptian hieroglyphs, but nobody knows about Mayan. The Maya are right, right down the road here. Okay, so then there's this lady who is I can't even say it. oh and see these are these are the same thing these pillars stand next to those Toltec guys okay so she's the goddess how old is she she's really ancient and I want to find you the picture she's, she's ancient? she her statue the okay. statue is huge absolutely huge and when the when the Spanish came, the Padres were so frightened by this statue, they buried it in the ground because it had this power. And then it wasn't dug up for years later. Oh, so and, that's of, how it lasted. and of course, I don't know the exact dates because I don't remember okay, such do things. Do you want to discuss a few more pieces? Sure. We'll follow you. Okay, so we can discuss more pieces and we can also discuss what we do is we we limit the palette of what is used. We pick the colors and we, we prime the canvases all equal a color on the back, uh, on the, you know, where they're gonna paint. And then they look at, make their drawings in chalk and then they start to paint. They chalk draw They just with white chalk sketch it really quickly and then they start to paint. But that's what sort of makes everything go together is this, these colors all sing to each other because they're chosen specifically to sing to each other. So that's why something like this, it's basically all the same colors with different amounts of white or water or whatever. And um, then this year, these with, that are black, they're all canvases that it's, this is the recycling part of our ancient and now. We just gessoed all the old canvases that no one had wanted or taken home. We gessoed them black. Black gesso, and then they painted on them oh, white. Oh, that's pretty cool. They recycled painting. Yeah. It's underneath all that black gesso was something else. Anyway, 
and they all work. So, and these are black and white, and these are, like we try to have what they paint have some relation to what we're talking about, but of course you have the free spirits <laughs> who say, I'm not doing that, I'm going to do this. And every, it all works. Okay, and this is, this is all from a Mayan mural. And so it's a long mural. And we just divided it up in sections and said, who wants to do this or this or this? Oh, and wow. they different artists. Different artists at different locations. Yeah. The, different the, locations. Right, the two blue ones were done at Dahlia. The um, middle one and the other two there were done at Chapel. And this one was a conglomerate done at Dahlia. Oh, that's so cool. So, there you have it. And then, looking at this behind Mr. Clark, um, these are the, the Toltec guys that you saw. This is what one person created. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. Go back to work. <laughs> so, this, this is, you know, like there's one person's way of doing it, way at the end, and another, and another, and another. Wow. And, and they're all looking at the same image. So what do you like best about Bayes I like the children. I like the adults. I like the retired. I like the people. And the I, subject matter is not bad. This, I love the subject matter. I love researching it all. I kind of do maybe too much, and then I get all confused because I'm not really an intellectual. <laughs> well, I'm are. just an artist. <laughs> Well, so, good job, Kathleen. All right, thanks. I got these guys. Very nice. Who are they? They are uh, Conjuntos Zacamandu, and it's a um, style of Mexican folk music from Veracruz called Son Jarocho. And um, You've, you've already heard a uh, Son Jarocho song, and that's La Bamba. La Bamba, but these guys don't have electric guitars, of course. But this is the, the, you know, the traditional. Are they local? Oxnard. Nice. But they go, to, they go down to Veracruz to, to the study with the master, and, make, and make their instruments. They make their own instruments. They make their own instruments? So, yeah. What do you like about the Artes? I We really like working with the kids. Um, it's really a lot of fun, and um, some of them actually turn out to have okay lives, you know. Yeah, that's what so. I heard. <laughs> so that's nice. <laughs> we did, you know, we did it to get grants. You get we could do all this academic research, you know, why is art good for kids, and so on and so forth, and um, you know, just incredible research why you know art should be taught in school, and it's not. I mean, not or more rarely anyway, but um, I think it's starting to come back. But it's it really helps students do better in all of school. I mean, they, there's they've got SAT data and everything about for all this stuff, and um, it helps them assimilate in culture better, and um, they just get better jobs, they get better grades, and you know all this stuff. It's just. And so we're seeing that, you know, in, I mean, backing it up, you know. Our data is anecdotal at best, but, you know. And there's still, still people that are, you know, had a good time. It seems like a nice change of pace from kids looking at their screens. Yeah. Any yeah. thoughts about that? Yeah. No, well, yeah, it's, it is. And, and, um, you know, I think I think that they, they 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 just like it. I mean, they don't think, oh, this is academically good for me, or this is what I'm supposed to do. They just like to do it. Some people don't want to come at all, you know. But um, and we, you know, we we they, this we've made a lot of friends actually. You know, we get invited to all the quinceañeros and you know the 25th wedding anniversary or 25th birthday at the girls' club. <laughs> And all these things, you know, so it's in weddings, and so it's nice, you know. You got a whole new set of friends. And, and 
and they're also your community. Yes, yes. You know, I, I had this connection uh, with with this, and so I know that the familiar with these. You know, one one of the projects that we go to is called Dahlia Court, and um, when when we were doing the um, initiative on Paradon, so there was a voter initiative that what was going to force the city to change our general plan to accommodate oil drilling in Carboneria. We were fighting that initiative, and I was on the um, group that was helping to do that, and so. We, I got um, a guy, Miguel Checa, to come, o to come over and we invite all these people from, from Dahlia Court to come to the community room and he get a presentation and then answer, que have questions answered. And Miguel was the translator. And I was flabbergasted. I mean, the room was full. There was 125 people there. I mean, it's like, what? I, w I was going to count myself lucky if we had five people, you know? And they and they had really good questions and stuff. And it was a great a great thing. And so this was their interest in the arts. Yeah, they were they were they were interested in it, and they somehow they knew about it. I mean, this is, you know, you kind of have to be uh, a little bit on the ball to know about some of these things, you know.